Welcome to the Straight Out of Home Video Podcast, part of the Geeky Waffle Network. This week's episode is Move On 2, and I'm still not happy about it. I'm Candace. <laughs> With me is Vanessa. Hey. And Bree. Hi. I'm switching it up on you guys because we I got know. I, was, I, <laughs> got, I got confused. Yeah, Bree was like, did she just forget about me? I know. So I've- this is our third time recording about this stupid movie that I currently hate so much. I had to stain for it before, but right now there is hate and rage in my heart. That's a lot of hate and rage, Candace. I have a lot of feelings. Okay, so I don't like this movie because I don't think it deserves to be called a sequel to the original Mulan, which in my opinion is a masterpiece. That's no, I saying. mean, it's a great mo- I mean, Mulan is a classic. I mean- there's no if, ends, or buts about it. Okay, so Bree, give us a short summary. All right, so Mulan 2, which I thought was going to be about Mulan training young girls to be badasses, uh, I mean, is you actually. You think that because of the opening, right? Well, yes, yes, because of the opening. Continue. Uh, but instead, it's about the engaged couple of Shangli and Mulan, and they have another mission assigned to them by the emperor, which is basically to sell off, I mean, marry uh, his three daughters oh. <laughs> to the neighboring kingdom to, you know, unite kingdoms and, and not cause a war because, you know, that happened back in the day. Yeah. And, you know, the lovely bumbling, I always Did forget you? their names. Yao, Ling, and uh, Chin Po, I think. Thank you. Yeah. Chin- Shin Po, Yao, and Ling? Yes. Yes. So those lovely bumbling idiots ended up falling in love with the three princesses. And lo and behold, they also fell in love with them. Love at first sight. No tri- no triangles either. No triangles. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're that's just, very, just very just cut like- and dry. Some things happen. Mushu is a dick. And, Something um, happens. <laughs> he's like, he's basically the antagonist of this movie. <laughs> yeah. He's a right old dick, and and that's basically the summary of this movie. And somehow everyone gets to marry who they want, uh, unlike history tells. Okay, so the movie opens with Mushu. He has a cushy life, being weighted hand and foot by the ancestors because he is the one who helped save all of China and brought honor to the family. You but- know, because Mulan did not bring honor to the family when she wouldn't um, be perfect. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a whole other thing. So anyway, yeah. so Mushu finds out that when Mulan marries Shang, she would marry into Shang's family and he wouldn't be her guardian anymore. So he would lose all his perks. And apparently so he go back yeah. to being just the gong, the gong. guy, the even gong though guy. it doesn't make sense because there's no one to gong for. There's no, yeah, like why would you be ringing a gong when the, I mean, the ancestors or the, or the guardians don't have a job anymore, really? <laughs> Well, yeah. I guess in the future, maybe. Well, there aren't going to be any more because, yeah, that's the end why? of them. But they like, should be worried too. But that's the thing is that why would he lose his status? Like, if if there if there are guardians that are going to be doing something, like wh- why would he lose his status just because Mulan married into a different family? That doesn't make any sense. Because one of okay, those well, two ancestors work together to help oversee the combined families, or no? No, no. But that's I not thought, how it's. But, but I thought in Mulan, they always say, like, well, she gets it from your side of the family. So I thought those were combined ancestors. Mm, that's fair. Or, I don't mm, think that they see? thought that far, though. Well, I did. <laughs> I think, yeah, Bree thought about this more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Because okay. really, in the first movie, she has both ancestors from both sides of the family. So I don't understand. I yeah, don't understand the she, issue. <laughs> and since she's the only child in that family what would happen to all those ancestors? Well, those ancestors would follow her with his. So okay. his ancestors well, and hers would get together. Well, Party. that's what ends up happening. <laughs> Shang and Mulan, they merge their ancestors, so Mushu still gets to be <laughs> a douchebag. But anyway, so <laughs> Mushu is actively trying to break them up throughout this movie. Which is horrible and, because oh, it goes... It goes against the character of, I mean, like he, you know, he's always, he's always been a little self-centered, but a little, yeah, well, yeah, but, but not to this extent, not to the extent that he would be completely trying to break up a 
potential marriage between you know I'm, I, he, because he, he loves loved, Mulan he, he, and he loves well yeah and he likes Shang Li for her and plus like as we find out that love marriages aren't very common well, so no. they wouldn't be yeah so it would be really cool for Mulan to actually you know like the guy she's gonna marry I do have to say the ancestor called Mushu a lazy lounge lizard and um, that's an insult I'm gonna I'm gonna use for people now <laughs> That's Maybe good. on myself, but it's going to be so, used. It's the one positive thing about this movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> lazy lounge lizard. Okay. So, so something that we talked about, I think, like twice now, because <laughs> again, third time recording this, is the heart over duty. Yeah. Issue. And, and is how – princesses. How, right. And like that's the thing is that, again, I know that they weren't going for historical accuracy. However, the st- – like, I don't understand why this was the story that they were trying to tell, because the story that they're basically trying to tell is follow your heart no matter what, because it's cruel for, you know, anybody to tell you who you're supposed to marry, which nowadays, obviously, that is that is a great message. And for kids, sure, I guess that's a great message, but like it, it, it ignores the historical context. And it the the biggest issue is that they're saying yes follow your heart you know like they don't want them to they don't want them to marry these these guys that they've never met before but they've only known these dudes that they fall in love with for a day two days maybe uh i think they they spend overnight it's got to be a little bit longer with traveling so but- maybe like a I mean, it's it's kind of a long way between kingdoms i would assume so maybe like 4 days but that's still not great also, no. can I say that's longer than most Disney princesses? I know, but that's a, but <laughs> they keep they they seem to try to keep moving away from that stereotype, yeah. and so that's why I was like, why did you just kind of fall back into that again? <laughs> I just wanted to say, "Follow Your Heart" was that ninety eight degrees song that played during the credits of the first Mulan movie, <laughs> and I have that on repeat. I Stevie forgot Wonder about Wilson that song. It? Am I forgetting this or remembering it? Okay. Anyway, continue, Brie. What I was going to say is the older princess of the emperor does mention this. She's like, you got to know your duty, which is also what <laughs> Shang Li says to Milan. Like, he's like, you know, it's... Vanessa, are you giggling at the word duty? No, I was I was giggling that she was saying, you got to know your duty. <laughs> okay. okay, the princess didn't say that. I, I thought I said just got. Sorry, no, my you said bad. You got okay. you got Sorry, I, I just had to clarify some things. And... Uh, okay, so the older princess of the emperor is basically like, you know, you, you have to know your duty. Duty. Uh, now I'm just saying it weird now. Oh, <laughs> I'm self-conscious. Uh, I hate Sorry. this movie now. No, I actually didn't mind it. It's mediocre at best. Basically, know where your duties lie. And that's actually what basically Shang Li tells Mulan. I know where my duties lie, which was a sick burn to her because she's just trying to help the princesses live their life to the fullest. She doesn't want to see them wed. Here's the thing. Shang Li and the older princess kind of have it right because if they don't wed these brothers, they can so cause many a war. Pe- yes, yeah, so many people will Millions die. Millions of that, subjects. That's yeah. the thing. Like that's that's also another thing that 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 kind of like miss me is just the fact that, you know, Mulan understands the perils of war. So <laughs> the, just, like oh my god, just, that's you're right. To just sit here and be like, oh, no, don't worry about that. She saw you a whole village destroyed. Right. Remember I mean, the like, I... doll? Oh, <laughs> yes. no, that, that haunts Felix. me. So, so, that it's, was... it's, so it's like, yeah. why are you? I mean, like, yeah, again, message, follow your heart is a good message. However, in the context of everything else going on, <laughs> this is not what should be happening right now. Well, no, it, it's very, it's actually like they would have been killed. If they were not to be wed, historically, yeah, so would have found them. Yeah, yeah, they've been like thrown in jail. They would have been killed. <sighs> so Mulan and Shang they argue and oh, like said a, a before, cliche Shang. arguing. Yes, Shang is like a bi icon. We love him. We all had crutches <sighs> on him in the nineties. Stand the bi icon cartoon, but yes, he is amazing and. I guess, you know, he has some flaws, so he gets a little angry, but, like, Mushu really, really tests them all. (laughs) 
There is a scene where Shang falls off a cliff and you think he's dead. Well, we don't think he's dead because it's a Disney movie, but the cast does. So I need a just a little cliff note thing. It's true to your heart. And it's like, <laughs> I typed in true to your heart. And it's like true to your heart about cardiovascular risk. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was 98 Degrees and Stevie Wonder and Raymond Simone also covered it. Oh, my God. For the Ella Enchanted soundtrack. That's oh, weird. No. Okay. That movie is a disaster. What? All right. Sure. Okay. Da- um, okay. Like We're gonna- so let's talk about how it sucks that this movie is not the greatest. Um, again, I'm kind of with Brie where I, like, I don't think it's the worst thing I've ever seen, but I, I also just... A lot of Disney sequels, it's not well, the worst. Right. Well, it, not that. And like also, you know, some of the songs are kind of okay. Like, oh, it's, oh you know, Solange is back, which is amazing. Can we can but can we talk about like uh, the song just like other girls where the princesses sing about right. eating as much as they wanted, not wearing tiny shoes, even though that's exactly what Mulan had to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and that's the thing. Yeah, exactly. It's not that other girls are can do whatever they want in this time period. Again, sorely ignoring the historical context as well as the first movie. <laughs> True, but I, I guess. In a way, okay, I'm going to play Devil's Advocate for a Mulan 2 movie. Ugh, don't do that. No, Nobody likes a Devil's Advocate. Well, I'm going to be one. Okay, go. go. Be a um, Dragon's ag- Advocate. <laughs> um, <funny>. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so if we say they're still harping on, not harping, but you know what I mean? It They're still on it about women not being allowed to do things. It does show that even though Milan progressed in her movie, that women still aren't being treated equally. And so I get why Mulan, for her, she would want other women to have as much freedom as she was allowed to have. And really, really, she only got that freedom because she did save all of China. Okay, like she hold on, saved hold the on. emperor. Okay, one. I think again, you're thinking farther than the writers ever did. Of course. And two, <laughs> and two, that makes sense, except for the fact that again, the stuff that the princesses are singing about isn't about like a freedom that like girls, other girls have. That they're talking about. I want to be like other girls. Other girls don't have that freedom. That's they're not, true. They they're, should be singing about how they want to be Mulan. Or, like, I don't know. I mean, like, just the fact that they could, like, maybe speak their minds or, like, do you know, like, all the stuff that, that Mulan kind of does, but not, like, other girls. Because other girls still don't speak their mind. Other I, girls still yes. don't do. Hmm? We could say that they don't know really what other girls do. So it's in their mind a fantasy of what hmm. they believe. Well, is Mulan okay, we're the going only too other deep girl? Into this well, okay. I'm going to raise this question real quick, even though I know it's too deep. Is Mulan the only <laughs> other girl they've met besides, like, handmaidens? That's true. Probably. Yeah, Probably. but, but right. I mean, why do they think, but why, then why do they think that handmaidens do that or other girls do that? Is it just, like, maybe that they've been taught in their, you know, I guess since they, they, they have to be more refined than other people, quote unquote. Probably. So maybe they've, like, they've been told, oh, you don't want to be like the other children who like play in the dirt and like just shove their face with all this food and blah, blah, blah. And we're, you know, maybe that's how they got the idea. Yeah. Let's go with that theory because it it sounds about right. Okay, good. So we're actually making a case for this movie now. Oh, gosh, we are. <laughs> all right. Well, let me say no, but but I will say that, like, again, the, my whole point, though, is that. It's sad that this did go in this this particular way because the cast is really cool for the most part. Well, who do you, you not have, like? They got, oh, well, they got a great cast, but they didn't get Eddie Murphy. They did because, not get Eddie Murphy well, beca- yeah. because, of, because yeah. of his contract for Shaq 2, which forbade him from reprising the role of Mushu. In this which film, is a crime and, in itself. Yeah. And he can't do it like on rides or anything else for Disney. That's he crazy. is now the voice of Donkey. Yeah, which is so weird. But anyway, in the I, morning, I mean, I'm like, getting waffles. <laughs> yeah, he is voiced by a white guy doing an Eddie Murphy impression. Yeah. And which, sit sigh here. Yeah, which I, you know, again, I don't agree with, but I think for, I mean, he at least did a, he did a good job. I'm not saying that this was the correct way to go. No. <laughs> he reminded I mean, me of those really bad, like, um, radio commercials that they would do those 
celebrity impersonations. <laughs> and they would tell you at the end, they're like, not actually the celebrity. And we're like, we know. Yeah. And then there's also, so Shang was played by, by B.D. Wong. Mm-hmm. And then you have Lucy Liu as May. Harvey Firestein as Yao. Sandra O oh as Ting Ting. And Lauren Tom as Sue. Pat, Mar- Pat uh, Morita or Morita, I don't remember. I don't know how it's pronounced, but he's the emperor and he's the, he is Mr. Miyagi. And then George Takai because he has to be in everything because he's awesome. It was awesome to see those, like, those names. And I feel like those names are probably what would have drawn people to it. And then you get this very odd meandering plot. (laughs) Oh, fuck you, plane. Okay, let's see here. Mm. Hold on, I'm pausing again for plane. Okay. Uh, something interesting. So Mulan's parents give Shang and Mulan a yin and yang symbol. And they give Shang the dark passive feminine half and Mulan the light active male half. Just to remind, it's believed that it's to remind each other of the other. Well, <laughs> and, ba- yeah, balance. Like you guys balance each mm-hmm. other out. and Yeah. So I thought it was just like a little interesting fact. No, it's cute. It is cute. But at the same time, it's it's funny that... They like because the re- they're like oh my gosh they're so different we better make sure that they're okay with the fact that they're so different when really all they did was say like two things opposite of each other like I like spicy well I like plain and then that was it and they're like uh oh <laughs> right like, this which is going to trouble weird because why <sighs> not everyone has to like everything the same. It was exactly. That's why I was just like, um, this is literally all you're basing this on. Yeah. Well, also, but those I are really... like what kids. Oh, those are what kids would think are issues for a marriage. You know, uh, may- maybe yeah, again, my... again, Candace, you don't enjoy this movie, so why are you making a? <laughs> that's true. Oh, d- yeah, it's trash. <laughs> Vanessa's completely right. It's horrible. What am I doing? <laughs> um. I, I really don't like the cliche things they did, especially that map part. Oh, that map part drove oh, me Oh, yeah, where insane. he doesn't want to ask for directions. Yeah, and she's like, we can just go to that village and oh, and through the water. And he's like, no, blah, blah, blah. And it's really annoying. Though, honestly, I feel like, he, uh, yeah, I hate the I hate the trope. But I feel like he was probably right in this situation. Not that, not that, like, not that you should necessarily not, you know, go with with your instinct or whatever. But at the same time, Mulan's never been through that those that area, and you have a very very strict timetable. Again, a very strict timetable in order for for a war to not start. <laughs> so, I would say use whatever tools you have, including the freaking map. In order to go find it. Because they didn't know a village was anywhere. She's like, oh, we'll follow a river. We'll find a village. You don't know when you're going to do that. You're not, you don't know. And that oh, map okay, thing, let's... too, was a distraction. And all the little lovebirds went to the village, which I have to say, Yao winning May, that panda, w- was cute. Oh, can we talk about the original concept for this What, no movie? one else found that cute? Yeah, yeah. No, it was cute. That's cliche, too. Okay, but the panda was cute. <laughs> okay, the panda was cute. All pandas are cute. Well, this is true. <laughs> okay, so the original concept, Barry Cook, the director of the first film, was asked to write a treatment, and he turned in a one-page draft that featured Mulan and Shang just about to get married. When the emperor sends them on a mission up north, the finale would have featured Mulan and her allies, which included her own ghost ancestors taking on Shang Yu and his ghost army. Doesn't that sound so much cooler? Well, it's obviously, out. yes. That would have been that would have been really cool. <laughs> and um, I'm going to mention this. Oh, uh-huh. go ahead, go ahead. I just wanted to say because the ghost ancestors. I wonder if that's where they got the idea for Pirates of the Caribbean. The they just pirates. grab this off the desk and be like, <laughs> "We can make it work." Uh, yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, this makes sense. Okay, so. We talked about this before, but the critic score on Rotten Tomatoes for this is a zero, <laughs> which I find hilarious. And I don't think it's. Me. I don't think it's that bad. I don't I mean, think it's a zero. I mean, I get Mulan is like the epitome, of, like of Disney movies. It's so good, but for a Disney sequel, it's not that bad. Bree, can you read this quote for me, please? 
According to Scott Gwynn of Cinema Blend, Mulan 2 is a direct-to-DVD disgrace that takes everything excellent about its predecessor film, rips it to shreds, and uses it for rat cage lining. Ouch. It spoke to me, that review. <laughs> it's late and I'm cranky. I'm really cranky and I'm mad at this movie because I think it's cursed. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, again... I, I understand Scott's anger. I understand your anger, Candace. <laughs> but I'm going to say this, like I say every time, compared to Return of Jafar, it's good. I think that this is worse than Return of Jafar. The animation is better, but Return of Jafar still has that, like, Aladdin heart. Well, Mulan 2, I didn't feel like the characters were the characters. <laughs> Vanessa, ta okay. Better or worse than Return of Jafar? Well, you're, you're... I can't say because I've never seen Return of Jafar. What? Nope. <laughs> what kind of 90s kid are you? I... <laughs> I know, I should. But honestly, like, because, you know, because I missed the one that we, we were recording that when you guys were recording yeah. that one. I was like, yeah, you know what? I need to watch this anyway because this is just, you know, it, it, everybody knows Return of Jafar and like, you know. But then you started saying everything was was <laughs> off, was so awful that I'm like, oh, I don't really want to put myself through that. You don't. <laughs> you... But Return of Jafar is why we made this podcast series. I know, I know. <laughs> but now I'm like, uh, I, 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 uh, I'll do it. For the podcast, I will do it. But I am. Yeah, because you have to be able I've, to compare. I know, but I've been putting it off. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't, I don't blame you for putting it off. I mean, okay, but also compared to Cinderella two, Mulan two is by far better. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. Do you agree? With oh, that? Candace. Candace oh. Cinderella two doesn't hurt me because I have no personal connection with Cinderella. I yeah, feel like you, I didn't watch that one until I was like 10. No, but, no, Cinderella. but I mean, yeah, Cinderella 2 is not good. At least this one has something. It has good songs. It has, I mean, uh, some good parts, some decent Does parts. It? it keeps going down for me. <laughs> the more you talk about it and think about it. It's still mediocre. It's still Can mediocre. Can I just say that my sister and I bought this on DVD together. So we spent our hard-earned child money on this. So this is probably why I'm bitter. It's probably, yeah. That's probably why you're bitter. <laughs> My babysitting money was gone, guys. <laughs> oh, Guys, I'm so tired. Oh, this episode is breaking us, guys. This is, we're just broken. We are. I swear. I swear. If this does not work out, there will never be a Mulan two episode. <laughs> so so tired. <laughs> I will say one thing about this movie: it made me hungry for pork buns because it oh, kept showing the pork, pork buns. buns. I was like, I just really want some pork buns now. Fair enough. Okay. I'm just surprised so Yao got a girl in the end. Well, it just ended up perfect. Everyone ended up with someone, just like real life. Just like real life. Because <laughs> I'm so cranky right now. Just like real life. Just like real life. <laughs> oh, 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 it makes me so sad that we're so cynical. <laughs> <laughs> we're a bunch of 30-year-olds watching Disney movies. What? <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? Uh, Oh, God. That Karens hate at Disney World because we're childless millennials going to Disney. We don't deserve happiness. No, apparently not. <laughs> Especially uh, according to Candace. <laughs> Guys, it did not think it was going to be Mulan 2 that broke us. I thought it was going to be on track. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, God. There's legit tears in my eyes right now. <laughs> My dog is looking at me concerned. <laughs> oh, okay. Well. Oh, God. I feel on Thank that note. <laughs> listening to our mental breakdown. <laughs> Your 30s, everyone. It's amazing. Uh, when you can't can't do anything that you want to do and you're not happy, you rewatch Disney movies with people and realize 
how much how how worse they were than you thought. It hurts. <laughs> you realize how stupid you were as a child. Why are we why so why are we crushing our childhood like <laughs> dreams here? <laughs> Because we've been quarantined for like six months. <laughs> it was bad. Oh, oh man. These dumb idiots in their childhood going places. They didn't know what they had. <laughs> These children wasting their time going to the mall. Oh my oh, god. Remember when going to the mall was a thing? Oh, oh that was the best thing. That was going awesome. To the Disney store. Actually, well, it was like awesome and then it was also not awesome because oh, yeah. you always were like, oh man, I wish that I was popular. And then now you're like, I had money. Well, that's, yeah. They had money and was popular. And then, like, that's the one good thing. In your 30s, you're like, oh, that really didn't matter at all. (laughs) (laughs) You know what matters, guys? Shang Li not dying. Oh. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Okay. So I have better feelings about the new live action Mulan, right? You guys do too. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Since Eddie Murphy can no longer play Mushu, I'm just glad they left him out. Well, well that would have been that would have been reason. difficult to like kind of factor in anyway, but Well, I know. I, I don't even think there's gonna be a Shang Li though, which I'm sad no, about. No, there isn't because they realized that well, they said in a post Me Too era it would be weird if her commanding officer was like her romantic interest i still sure, think he's a sure. bicon though he fell in love with mulan as a man there will be a love interest in mulan wait there and will? we will be tweeting about it and probably facebooking about it brie tell them how to find us on those things well, if you would like to, us to destroy your childhood more, please follow us at thekikiwaffle.com for blogs and podcasts and, and more. Uh, more being the breakdowns. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> then also follow us on Twitter, uh, which is geeky underscore waffle. Candace is the queen over there. She has you. She'll, she has a lot of feelings. Uh, she expresses so there. Feelings. Uh, and then also we have a Facebook community group called Geeky Waffles, um, where you can also have breakdowns with us. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's a good, it's a whole lot of fun. We <laughs> laugh about it, um, but we also cry. Um, I was laugh crying just five minutes ago. <laughs> laugh crying. I still have tears in my eyes. My sides hurt, um, but I don't know if that's just from <laughs> depression or just from laughing. Both. <laughs> Both. Yeah. <laughs> Um. Uh. So come there. We'll we'll commiserate. We'll we'll post some memes. We'll we'll be a support group. Um. For and you. Wait. I just want to say if this is your first episode listening to this. We are so sorry. <laughs> come. Let us destroy your childhood They're one not- podcast at a time. Uh, <laughs> uh. We're destroying ours in the process. Ah. <sighs> Any last thoughts, people? Um, the acting of the bridge scene was really good. Yeah, it was. I have no further thoughts. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, also, the brother that they wanted Mulan to marry when she sacrificed herself to, like, be important after she thought Shang Li died, um, looked 12 and it was creepy. True, true. Still a mediocre okay. film. Well, Brie, Vanessa, thank you for joining me for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope this works out. And we all hope you have a happily ever after until the sequel where a dragon tries to break up your engagement. <laughs> <laughs>